My host, Joe Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Join me at the market site in Times Square, New York City. We have Chris Dearborn. He's the Managing Director on NASDAQ's Market Intelligence Desk. And Chris, the obvious question today is, is the sell-off another opportunity or buy the dip as we've been seeing all throughout the year, or is this something bigger than that? It's a little bit of uncertainty. That's why you see in the risk-off conditions. We made all-time fresh highs yesterday on the first day of the new year. Markets are feeding into that momentum coming in, that fear of missing out all through December, and that really brought us to a pivotal point where the markets are making fresh all-time highs. Today, with the global economic situation, People are still a little concerned, but really the geopolitical situation is all that's on the tape right now. And with that drone strike last night, the escalation or de-escalation of what's going to happen in the Middle East is really the major concern. Markets are risk off at the moment, but we're still trading within the stone throw of the all-time highs. The volume really isn't there for a fear sell-off yet. We're going to see if there's a reprisal of what there may be coming out of that Iranian regime, whether it's something to the U.S. or its allies. We'll wait and see what happens there. Depending on how that plays out, this market will play out. At the moment, any dip over the past 12 months should have been bought. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing that for sure. We opened up at the lows and have not looked back since. I'm sure what happens over the weekend with the news headlines is really going to dictate how the futures open on Monday. But another piece of data came out this morning. The manufacturing downtrend continues. Right. It's coming in. It's a five-month low. It's showing global uh, slowing in manufacturing here in the U.S. Which, but the real part of that is, is that if this trade situation continues to uh, move the way it's going with the si phase one deal signed on the 15th, that alleviates some of that significant pressure. Again, a lot of the manufacturing is being exported here. It really hasn't been as much as we've been hoping for in the past couple of months because of what's been going on between China and the U.S. If that starts to alleviate itself, you expect the economists who pull for G, uh, Q4 GDP to look to a little bit better number. Hopefully, we'll see what that change. We'll have to wait and see what happens with phase two and how that starts to negotiate. But again, signing of the phase one deal should be enough to alleviate the manufacturing number that was very disappointing today. Again, an all-time low going back to June 2009, over 10 years. Yeah, all right, let's pull up our first chart here. This yep. is S&P 500 on a one month. Now, all things remaining the same, assuming we didn't have the Iranian news come out last night. It looks like this uptrend continues. Right, it looks actually, if you look at the chart, X the news, and it's really hard to do that, but mm -hmm. technicals generally lead the way. You're looking at a nice fundamental move across the one month, and it's higher highs. Even with the pullback today, we're not making any lower lows. It's still a higher low, and that, that's a usually a consensus point of a buy the dip type of momentum. And you look at the chart here over the month of December and coming into this month, nothing's really changed. All right, moving along to our next yep. chart, we clearly have to talk about gold today because that's some major moves on the overnight, and even in today's session, here mm -hmm. we're looking at the daily. Right, so the risk off sentiment has been to sell those riskier assets and buy the safe havens. Oil spiked naturally on that move, we're up over 3%. Uh, again, the draw today with the DOE kind of did that as well, but gold itself has been on a very impressive run. It's up nine of the prior 10 sessions, five of the last six weeks, and now seven of the last nine months. Which is so interesting because equity is having the same kind of performance as well. Right, gold's been hovering north of the 1500 level for a long period of time, but it's coming to an expected resistance level. Brian did a good job on the chart today. He pulled two charts into the blog, and you're coming to an expected resistance level here of 1557. Now, what you're seeing on the bottom here is the RSI is indicating a very overbought condition. Usually when you have an exhaustion buy into an, a, com a commodity or an equity or any other item, you're going to see a little bit of a pullback as those buyers consolidate into that exhausted space. You're looking at an RSI on a daily basis of an 83, weekly of a 70. Again, very overbought conditions, but again, geopolitical aspects could make that really moot depending on what happens over the next couple of weeks. All right, and our next chart is the gold monthly. And you yep. pointed that out in the note this afternoon that we put out for the midday update that mm -hmm. near term, you could potentially see some profit taking, but longer term, it still looks like there's a little it's bit more. It's still movement. a fantastic chart. You're yeah. looking, he, he, he used a couple of Fibonacci retracement levels here today, and you're looking at a much longer period, almost 13 years, and you'll see that gold in heightened areas of 2011 and 12 of concern made all time highs near $2,000 per ounce. And you still got room to run. Again, with this retracement level here, you could see some near-term profit taking, but there's still room for this commodity to run up until the, the higher levels here, 1587, and then you look for it to pull back a little bit back then under the consolidation phase. If it does that and stays above the, the support level, you could see gold retest those highs made back in 2011. All right, and of course, next week we have December, the jobs report, all yes. important, and we have the Consumer Electronics Show, so a little bit of headlines <laughs> in addition to what we're seeing geopolitically. Not to mention NASDAQ's Wellness Week kicks off next week. Yeah, so that's always one of our fun weeks, and we're only two trading days <laughs> into the year. <laughs> <It is. laughs> Definitely uh, no shortage of news this year.
Thank you for joining us on NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.